Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our webinar on how to make seed balls with Ashley Summers. I'm so excited about this class. Actually, it's not just Ashley. We also are very excited to have her daughter join us for this class. Alice is here too. So they're going to both show us how to make seed balls. I'm really excited. Um, this is a little bit of a full circle moment for Ashley and I. We met each other at Slow 20 years ago. Um, so yeah, this is pretty fun for me um, and I think her too. And it's just, it's really neat to see them here and um, showing us this activity. We do have a poll going on. And so if you could take a moment and, oh, let me launch it. I never do that. Okay. Um, take it take a moment and fill out the poll. There's some information that we want to gather before the presentation. Um, and then let me see, I just upcoming classes. We have fruit tree pruning this Saturday at 10 a.m. with Elizabeth Ruiz. It's one of our more most popular classes. So a ton of great information, definitely worth checking out um, if you have fruit trees. And then organic rose care on February 2nd at 5 p.m. That's a Wednesday. Um, and then rose pruning February uh, 5th at 10 a.m. So, I mean, we're like getting into spring. It's happening um, fast. So once, once you start pruning roses, you know spring's right around the corner. Um, anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the Q&A. We'll take some questions uh, here and there during the presentation, but we're going to reserve the majority of the questions towards the end of the presentation. Um, okay, let me look at the poll really quick. So third, uh, even split between Contra Costa and San Francisco, 38%. Uh, each. Um, and then 77% of attendees are just here to learn how to make seed balls. So that's fun. And then 15% are parents, 8% teachers. So, oh, fun. This is cool. And then the majority of people heard via email. All right. Well, so I'm super excited for this class and I really look forward to their presentation. Uh, Alice and Ashley, I'll turn it over to you and thank you so much. Okay, I'm just going to move this out of the way. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. So my name is Ashley Summers and I'm here with my daughter, Alice. We live in San Francisco. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Alice. So this is Alice. Um, she is six years old and we both live in San Francisco and this is our backyard. We have a little backyard in San Francisco, which is so wonderful. And as you can see, it's pretty green. We had lots of rain. Um, we have a lot of sour grass back here, which Alice loves to sometimes pick and chew on. Um, and we're really excited to start planting as well. So, um, Little bit of background on me. So I uh, I did meet Jen working at Slow Garden Center. Um, I started working there uh, in 2001. I was a high school student um, and it was really close to my house. I knew nothing about plants. Um, and actually just shortly after I started working there, um, I met my husband uh, working there. So here's some photo evidence that I did indeed work at Slow with uh, my husband, Charlie. And so um, that is how I uh, met Jen, met my husband, and that's, that's how Alice came to be. Um, and so I worked there for about seven years um, and still live in the neighborhood, still shop at Sloat. Um, and I am um, really excited to show you this project that Alice and I did recently. So Alice, do you wanna tell them the story about why we started making seed balls? Go ahead. I can chime in whenever you want me to. You want me to start the story? Go ahead, tell them. Okay, so it was Alice's sixth birthday and she had just started kindergarten, right? And what did they tell you you could do on your birthday at kindergarten? Bring, bring something and I brought seed balls. 
Yeah, we brought seed bombs. And the reason we decided to bring seed bombs was because we can call them seed bombs or balls. Um, yeah, and we didn't want to bring plastic because it stays on the environment forever. Yeah, sometimes um, on birthdays, kids bring a lot of little plastic toys, which I'm sure if you're a teacher or a parent or a human, you are familiar with this problem. Um, and we get little bags full of plastic toys, and they're really exciting at first, and then they end up all over the house and, um, you know, eventually in, in the landfill. So I was trying to think of something we could do that was a fun project that Alice could share with her class um, since we aren't really able to bring food, especially during um, the pandemic. So we came up with this seed ball project and it's actually pretty simple. Um, and once we made them, we gave them out in our classroom and we actually on our walk to school picked a spot and we put a seed bomb out ourselves. And um, it's been growing since August since Alice's sixth birthday and I actually have a little picture to share with you on how our little plants are doing. Yeah, do you want to show it, put it up to the screen? So that's a picture of Alice and her little plants. So here's Alice here and then we have three little plants growing. Um, and it's been about six months. And as you can see here, we have a lupin. Um, and I don't, I actually, Jen might be able to chime in on what these other two are. They look familiar to me, but I haven't seen the, the flower buds yet. So I'm not sure. Um, so each of those were a seed bomb? So they, they all came out of uh, one or two different seed bombs. And mm -hmm. these are all from the Slope Garden Center. Um, I think it's like Bay Area Native Wildflower Pack or something like that. Oh, cool. Yeah, so they're doing really well. And especially with the winter rains, um, they've been really happy. So we're really excited to see what, what flower buds come out, what color the lupin's gonna be. Um, and it's a fun thing for Alice and I on our walk to school every day, we check on them. Uh, at the beginning when it was really dry, we would water them. Um, now they seem to be really established and happy. So we're really stoked to see what comes out. Um, so I now know a little bit about who our audience is. Um, I think this project is really, yeah, we can't see the audience, but they can see us. So that's, that's all that matters right now. Um, and so I kind of wanted to explain a little bit about what these can be useful for. So I did make some examples last night. Do you want to bring that up to the, the camera? I made a little example for you of what the, the finished project. They don't have seed bombs, seeds in it. It yet, These but. ones don't have seeds in them. They were just uh, an example to show you kind of the size and what they look like. Um, this is a green one, but you can make it in lots of colors. And we're going to make it in blue, yellow, red, and orange. Yeah. So um, some of the ways that you can use this project for, for, um, for kids is... Um, is they're really good party favors. So if you are not a fan of leaving, if you're not a fan of leaving kids parties with bags of stuff, um, but you also want to let your kid give something out of their party, then this is a great project to do um, and can be really, really fun. Um, I recommend, uh, you know, putting them in a little paper bag. So these are just the bags you get with pastries. So you can probably order these online or um, buy them at like, uh, you know, Michael's or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then I also got these at like a Michael's or, or Joann's or something. Um, and so if you let them dry, you can put them in here, you know, decorate the bag, put a little sticker on it. Um, you can also do this as a project at a birthday party. I think if you have a small enough group, um, it's definitely something you can all do together. It's really great for preschool, I think, because um, Alice went to a, a play-based preschool and a lot of the things that we did there were really sensory activities. And so the best part about this project is, aside from the blending or the food processing, um, kids can really get their hands into this and uh, at all different stages. So whether it's cutting up the paper, putting the paper into water, after the adult blends it, touching the, the, the mushed up paper, I think it's a really good sensory activity. And then it's also something you can follow. So once you, once you plant the seed balls, if you're um, with kids, you can you know, keep an eye on them and, and, and document them and watch them grow. Um, so in that regards, I think it could also be a project through elementary school if you have a garden at school. Um, and I also think because it's almost Valentine's Day, it could be a really great alternative to a candy Valentine or a plastic yeah, Valentine. You can make them in heart shapes. You could make the seeds say, I love you 
or something. Yeah. And then you can make red and pink. Yeah, totally. So you could choose the color of paper you want to use. Um, and then you could even shape them into hearts if you wanted to. So we make them into little balls, but if you have a little bit more time, you can shape them into hearts, which would be really cute. Um, and can then, show an example? yeah, we'll, we'll do that in a little bit. Okay. We're almost there. We're just kind of going over all the different ways this project can be relevant. Um, so let's just go quickly over the supplies that you need. I actually had all of the supplies in my house already. The only thing I needed to get was the native seeds. So how about when I say the supply, you can show it. Does that sound good? Okay, so the first thing you need is, what is this? Paper. Yeah, colored paper. We have orange and we have red. Yeah, so any color you want. Um, I would recommend at least two sheets per color. Um, and each sheet makes about one and a half seed balls, about the size that Alice showed. So these- is that, are, is that a certain type of paper or? You know what, it's just, this is just your regular pack of construction paper that construction. I got. Construction, oh, okay. Yep, uh, they're a little bit larger than your like eight and a half by 11 computer sheets, not, not by much. Um, they're not like 11 by 14 or 11 by 17, um, but they, two sheets makes about three balls, you know, this size. So oh, if, wow. if you want to make them for an entire class, you know, you're just going to have to do a little bit of math. So one sheet is one and a half seed balls. Um, so pick out your colors, two sheets each is great. Um, you can also use old newspaper, be, be creative. Um, any kind of paper that once soaked in water would be kind of mushy, I think will be fine for this project. Um, then you need scissors. You wanna, you wanna hold up our scissors? We have very sharp scissors. Very sharp scissors. Um, and then you need some water. So we have some water here yeah, in the okay. jar. Shoot. Yeah, you can put it down. Uh, we have some bowls here to put our, our water and our paper in. Um, we have a food processor. I would say a food processor is the best thing for, for getting the paper into a pulp, but I think you could also use like a Vitamix or a really good blender. Um, you might need to add a little extra water and then squeeze it out at the end. Um, and then I would recommend native seeds. Uh, seed bombs can be really fun to just kind of like throw in a patch of dirt in your neighborhood somewhere or um, just like toss in the yard at preschool, but you definitely want something that's going to not be something that's invasive, something that's going to attract beneficial insects and create habitat for, for butterflies and for bees and birds. And so I definitely would recommend um, some native seeds. And I know Slope has a ton of those. Um, today, Alice and I are going to use a little packet of seeds that our friend gave us from her garden. And we're just going to put them in our yard. But we have a little packet here of like some marigolds and cosmos and things because that's what we had kind of hanging around the house. And we're just going to throw, throw them in our yard and kind of see what happens. So that's the, that's the, uh, uh, the ingredients list. All right. So now we're going to get into the actual process of making them. Um, so I was telling Alice, kind of like a cooking show, we have things in various stages here, but the first thing you need to do is you need to cut the paper up. Cut the paper. So I'm going to take red paper and the way I recommend doing this, I mean, it doesn't really matter what shape the paper is in. Um, you just want to get it into small enough pieces that it doesn't clump up the food processor. But the way that's simplest to me is I take the two sheets, um, one on top of the other, I'm an efficiency person. I fold it in half and then may I have this? Okay. And then I like to cut them like this into strips. So you get about five or six. It's like I'm gonna get five this time. It's a little windy in San Francisco. You know that if you're here today. Um, and then I take the strips like this and I can cut about three at a time. So I'll take a bowl. And so ultimately, ultimately they're being cut into squares. So maybe Alice, once I cut this one, you want to hold up a square so they can see what those look like. How kind of how big they are. Perfect. So that's kind of what they look like once you cut them up. And see, this is a great activity for like preschoolers could sit here and do this for like probably a couple hours if you have the like kid scissors. Um, just cutting up paper and 
doesn't matter if they're all the same color. You can make them rainbow seed balls if you want. Um, and so now you have- We made rainbow seed balls. We did. We made like six or seven colors. If yeah, we made red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and pink. Which is the picture you saw on the, on the front. Um, so this is what the, uh, the bowl of paper looks like. And then all you have to do- Is add some water. Like this. This one here is yellow. So we've already- is it, is it just enough to cover the paper, basically? Yeah. To cover the paper. And then you want to let it sit for at least 20 this minutes. Is blue. Yeah, so we've already let a couple sit. So I'm going to, I just filled the red one to cover the paper. And I'm going to set that one aside. Yeah. Now we're going to start cutting up the orange. Why don't you cut the orange for me? And I'm going to start the next part of the process, okay? So Alice is going to start cutting up the orange. Just be careful of the wind. Okay. So. The next part of the process is soaking it for 20 minutes. So if you're doing this along with me right now, um, you know, you're not going to be able to, to do the part after soaking the water for another 20, soaking the paper for another 20 minutes, but that's fine. You can just watch me, let your paper start soaking, um, or you can do it later. So I've already soaked a couple bowls of paper. Alice, should I do blue or yellow? Um, I think you should do yellow. First. Yellow, okay. So I'm going to bend down and get my food processor, which... Um, so I'm going to grab my food processor, which, you know, this is real life. It's not like super clean, just, you know, I'm a, I'm a human. Um, <laughs> I did, I did make some seed balls in this last night, so it still has some green paper in it. Um, and all you do now is you take your, did you say blue or yellow? Okay. So you take your, your paper and you don't want to pour the water in with it. Okay. So you just want to take the paper and and um, let the water drip off a little, put it into your food processor and spread it out. Um, it does tend to clump up. And if it clumps up too much, you can totally add more water. Um, it's just that you don't need to pour the whole bowl in. And this is a part for an adult to do. So if you're in a preschool setting, I would definitely recommend having the kids cut all the paper. And then when they're out doing their snack or whatever, an adult can blend it up. Um, and all you do is start to... because we're not going to make all of them on the screen, okay? Thank you, honey bunny. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. As you can see, it starts to clump up a little bit. And all you have to do if it does that is kind of spread it back out again. But as soon as it gets to a certain size, it, it actually is really easy. So as you can see, it's clumping up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour a little bit of water in there and that's gonna help it break up. Ashley, what like consistency are you going for? Like, is it like oatmeal or is I was it like- I gonna say, it's a lot like oatmeal. So you mm -hmm. totally know when it's ready. Um, okay, now that it has some water, it should be a little better. If it doesn't take long. I would say it takes less than two minutes. There we go. There we go. So once the table stopped shaking, that was when I knew kind of that it wasn't clumped up anymore and it's the perfect consistency. So let me show you what it looks like. And it's so pretty too, actually, when you do the colors. Where's, where's the bag? This is what it looks like. So as you can see, yeah, it's kind of like the, cons it's like the size of oatmeal. I wouldn't say it's the same consistency necessarily, um, but it's kind of crumbly. Um, it's definitely not too soggy. Like it's not, I'm not able to really squeeze much water out of it. Okay. So I'm gonna put this food processor on the ground now. 
the way. Okay, so this is the fun part, I think. So I'm gonna have Alice do this. So I'm gonna pour this water. Pardon. And Alice, help me do the honors. So we take out the, the blade. Okay. The grown up has to do that. And then do you want to take all this pretty yellow paper and put it in the bowl? We take all the yellow paper. This is the really fun part if you're like with little kids because it's a really good sensory activity. You can let them play with it for a while before you add the seeds. Um, it just feels really, really good. Yeah, you could like make this and not make a full seed bomb and like just have this as sensory play. Totally. Whatever they want sensory. Okay, so we're all done with that part. And now it's, um, yeah, it's really fun to just kind of like squeeze it, shape it. Um, if it doesn't feel like it will stick together, you can totally add a little more water. But now you get to add the seeds. Yeah. So I'm gonna let Alice do the honors. Would you like to add maybe about like half of this bag? You know, I, the one thing that I would say, I would say like less than a teaspoon, depending on what seeds you have. You know, if you're an experienced gardener, you know that not every seed is going to grow, but you also don't want hundreds of seeds growing in one little section of your of your yard or wherever you put them. Um, so that's perfect, honey. Um, and you can also, when you go to plant it, um, if you're throwing it into like a little patch of dirt somewhere in the neighborhood, crumble it up a little bit if you want to. Um, but yeah, like a teaspoon, I think is a good, a good amount to go for. So Alice is just mixing it up with her hands now. Okay. And so just kind of get a good even distribution. And it's really pretty too, <clears throat> because the seeds um, are all different shapes and colors and sizes. And when it like doesn't stick, that means it's ready when it's. Yeah, so now she's gonna take uh, a little bit of in her hand and turn it into a ball and we'll just go ahead and put it on this plate. A little bit of water might squish out, that's okay. And um, yeah, put it on the plate. okay, and then- I'm surprised you don't have to put like clay or something. I, like, yeah, it's so easy. Just sticks together. And like I said, it's really cute. Like these um, marigold seeds are really pretty and they're like really long. So you can see one right there. Um, I, I've seen people use these for wedding favors. You can flatten them out um, and make them into like little sheets of paper and people write on them. Um, like I said, you could totally turn this into the shape of a heart if you wanted to. I'll show you at the end. And then it takes a long time to dry. So I'll be totally honest with you about that. If you're gonna do it for Valentine's, definitely do it a few days beforehand. Um, I made these last night and they're still pretty wet. So you could leave them out in the garden to dry, um, in the sun to dry. The seeds may start sprouting because it's they're wet. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to let them dry, but then you're also gonna to wanna to give them away as soon as you can. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So as you can see, they really hold on to the color that you chose. Um, they're really cute. It's a fun project and it's so easy. Like, I love it. No, it's, uh, it was like way easier than I thought it was going to be <laughs> and super cute and perfect. I think that's a great gift. Like you said, for, uh, birthdays or, you know, wedding or what, you know, it's, it's great. I love it. Um, somebody asked if you used shredded paper before, you know, you can buy those bags of like just shredded oh. You totally could, like if if you had leftover shredded paper from a present or like if that, I think it's probably they're probably just like. Um, could you? It seems like with the paper that it you it takes a lot of paper for one and so and that shredded paper sometimes is more of like a tissue paper consistency right mm -hmm. or i don't know so maybe you would need more shredded paper you might. but I, you um, might. I think tissue paper is going to be too thin 
Um, I'm thinking more like the crinkle paper that sometimes comes in like a gift box or like a oh yeah mm -hmm. thicker. Um, I think the the consistency of a a, um, a grocery bag might be too thick, so somewhere between mm. crinkle paper and construction paper or newspapers is good. Yeah. Uh, it could you just theoretically just take that even now just as you did it and just put it in the ground I mean do you also do you bury it when you put it on the ground or do you just is it on top you just put it on top I think oh, that okay. it, it kind of I think it kind of depends a little bit um I think for the ones that we planted in the neighborhood um we we put it on the ground and we poured some water on top and it sort of disintegrated a little bit on its own. Um, and then once the little sprouts came up, we just kind of made sure that they had enough soil on top of them to keep them uh, stable. Um, so they weren't like gonna blow away. Um, but yeah, it just depends on, on where you throw it. Like if you're just gonna throw it in a dry patch of dirt and never tend to it, 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 it may not even sprout. So you do have to pay a little bit of attention to it. So, you know, if you had dropped one before the rains, that would have been a really good time. Mm. Um, so if we're not expecting any rain, you know, definitely we brought a little, um, just brought my water with us on our way to school and we would just share with the, with the seatbelt. Oh, fun. Play breakfast. Oh, nice. Um, one thing, some, a couple of people asked about uh, protection from like birds or squirrels. I've. I don't know if you've done this, but I just, I recently got, so Sloat has seed balls in stock, just pre-made. Uh -huh. And I got them and they do recommend um, spray, like kind of spritzing them with water and then sprinkling cayenne pepper on them. Oh. And that helps to tour um, squirrels and birds and stuff. Cause they'll- well, that makes sense. For those yeah. who are not in the sunset, maybe. We don't have lots of squirrels. Yeah neighborhood um we only have like we, we have lots of birds um our birds are very busy with uh There's one tweeting right now other things mm -hmm. yeah, I think you live in a, a part of the bay area that has lots of wildlife you're definitely going to want to consider something like that yeah mm -hmm. um and then how i guess it depends on the seed but how i can't remember maybe you said it with the pictures that you showed how long was it once you put the seed ball down to once you saw plants sprout that was actually not too not too uh long um i mean if you're familiar with when your kid brings home like a little you know peat pot of of a, a string bean or something like the sprout will come out really really fast mm. it was a longer time till we saw the shape of the leaf so as you probably know like the first leaf that comes out of a plant is not usually the shape of the, the rest of the leaves mm -hmm. so leaf was a big flat circle mm. um and I was like oh I wonder what that's going to be and then out popped this beautiful perfect shaped lupin uh leaf um that probably took like a couple of months before we saw that first leaf that kind of gave us a clue to what it was but mm. but yeah I would say within like the first week or two we saw little sprouts well this has been so great I mean a lot of people commenting um that this is a lot of fun for kids. They're really happy that Alice is here to help help show us. Um, and I just, I'm kind of blown away at how easy it is. And I, I love that you can make such vibrant colors too, because I think that that's uh, another really appealing thing about it because it can't, like you said, for like gifts or whatnot, like it's, it's, just, it's very pretty, it's very cute and you can put it in cute packaging and whatnot. Yeah, and I think and, the rise, um, my suggestion would be like Michael's or something. I think you could easily, if these are nice and dry, you could put a glue dot on your Valentine and then stick the sea ball to that. And that would be really cute. You might want to tell your classmates, you know, what Alice is making different sculptures with them. Um, you might want to tell your classmates how to take care of it. Stay option. 
And I think you were saying before, when we were talking a couple of days before, you could use the same process and really flatten it out into like a paper, right? Like a, a sheet of paper yeah. and, and dry it and write on it or stamp on it or yeah. whatever. So there's yeah. a lot of possibilities there. Yeah, I think for the, if you're going to want to write on it or anything, you're going to have to press a lot more of the water out, but definitely you can be creative. Mm -hmm. Well, this is great. Thank you both so much. I do want to remind everyone that this is being recorded and the recording will be available um, Tuesday. I don't know the date right now, but it's Tuesday the 25th. Um, and I did send a link in the, our follow-up email. So the recordings are available on our website and also on our YouTube channel. If you subscribe to our YouTube, you'll get a notification when the recording's up. Also, I, I forgot to mention that Ashley did do a supply list um, outline for us that I sent you, you should have received when you signed up for the class, but that will also be underneath the recording when it's posted on our website. So you'll know all the supplies that she just went over. And um, I'm just so thankful for both of you. This has been so fun. I wanna, I kind of wanna come over and make seed balls with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious about that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to make that happen for thanks sure. For that. Thank, you, thank you for having us. It was really special to, to come and, and uh, share our little uh, project with you guys. Thank you, and I hope everybody has a great day. It's nice out today, so uh, enjoy it and plant some seeds. And thank you so much, Alice. You did a great job. Amazing. All right, thanks. Have a good day, Bye. everyone.